Welcome to video number one of the Surge 2 boss guide. In these videos, I'm covering all the major bosses in the Surge 2. Today, I'm covering the main boss of Port Nixon, Little Johnny. This guy is no joke, so let's get started. All right, let's run up the ramp. And even though I'm showing the beginning cutscene right here, <laughs> I definitely didn't beat him on my first try. Yep, there he is. Little Johnny is getting angry. Yeah, he's uh, a little intimidating. So, let's start over again. Okay, so, first thing you might notice about this guy, something a little unusual. He does not have a health meter. Yeah, see those little, uh, like, blue battery-looking things? That's his health, basically. What you need to do is destroy five parts on him that are, like, his coolant tanks. Basically, the things that keep him from overheating. When he overheats, he dies instantly. So, the five parts you need to destroy are the three legs, and then two coolant tanks in the front of his body, behind his arms. Now, the first things I'm going to go for are the coolant tanks. Because those require a little bit more precision than the other parts, but you can do this in any order you want. What you need to do is walk in front of him, and then parry his attacks. You have to parry him three times before he'll actually get stunned and you can attack him, as you can see. See those little uh, shields on him? That means that you have to parry him three times in a row, or just three times, before he'll actually get stunned. Thankfully, the coolant tanks don't take that many hits. So, what do you want to do to parry him? Well, I'll show you real soon. He pretty much has one attack that he always does. He has these attacks, but there it is. Left, right, left. That's pretty much his main attack when he's right in front of you. Left, right, left, right, left, right. See, so he just keeps attacking. So what you want to do is just block those. If you can block those, then he'll get stunned, and then his coolant tanks are easy picking. There we go. Alright. So that's two down. So now I need to go after the legs. Now going after the legs is in some ways harder and in some ways easier, because you don't have to do any parrying to destroy these legs. What you want to do is bait out one specific attack. He's been doing it a couple of times, but... I'll explain in a little more detail pretty soon. This one, where he slams forward with his front leg and then follows up with his other two legs. That is the time to attack him. Now he's got more attacks with his legs. He'll do like a big stomp and he'll do a swipe with his uh, two front legs. If you're just standing close to them. So what you want to do is stand far away from him and then bait him out to get him to do his front flip attack. When he does that, then his legs are easy picking. See? I didn't go after that one because he has some mines beside him. That's one of his other main attacks. And this one, where he spits poison toxic sludge at you. Basically, just don't be in front of him. He does like a big scream and he starts rearing up. That means he's going to do it. Thankfully, it doesn't leave any residue behind, so just as long as you avoid it, you're okay. Now, these mines are a huge pain. You want to avoid the mines. That's when he stands up and, like, all this water pours out. He spreads mines around. That's also a good time to attack his legs when he does that, because the mines don't actually activate until he's done doing his attack. Wrong. Yeah, see those slams that he does with his legs? They can't be blocked, they can't be parried, anything. You just need to avoid them. See? This is a perfect time to attack the leg. And the front leg is actually the easiest one. Yeah, 
As you can see, when the legs are damaged, they actually leave out like some poison gas, so you just don't want to stand by them, but you would never go close to them anyway normally, so it's not really that much of an issue. Uh, and you see that? He also has an attack where he tries to hit you from behind, if you're behind him. It's not something that comes out very often, but just keep that in mind. Only hit it a couple of times and get out of the way when you can. Yeah, and you see, there's a big swipe. He does that with all of his legs, basically. And these mines, they only go off if you step on them directly. Yeah, and as you can see, they're bad, because if you get stunned by them, then you can't dodge or move very fast, so you're probably going to get hit by one of his attacks. So at this point in the fight, it's all about just keeping an eye on where these mines are and not walking into them. There we go. Beating him gets you a little Johnny's forceps, which is actually a pretty good weapon. It's a good weapon to use at this point in the game. And the EMP-44 Starfish, which allows you to open magnetic doors. It's over, isn't it? Shame it had to come to this, but... Oh, uh, okay. Let's check this guy out. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, I see something. something I <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. He's chunky bits. Yeah, he's definitely dead. <laughs> So, I'll just demonstrate what this uh, thing does real quick. You can use it to open magnetic locks. You just shoot it, and then you press the button again to activate it. Door opens. Also, it's really good for stunning enemies. It doesn't require any ammo, so it's a really good tool for fighting enemies. And there you go. That's how you deal with Little Johnny, the boss of Port Nixon. Thanks for watching, and take it easy. No sweater!